Hello everybody, I'm with Tim Watson at the MCG, Melbourne against Fremantle. Do you think the Demons have got a chance to have their first win for the year? I reckon they do, and uh, I think they believe they've got some sort of a chance too. They haven't been playing good football. Fremantle last Friday, they were terrific against Geelong, but can they hold on to that form on the road? Let's have a look at the Demons lineup and three changes, bait an important inclusion, Garland and Whelan into the team. And this is where they'll need to get on top two in the midfield. Nathan Jones and Brock McLean, two of their best clearance players in the side. Both those players are capable of winning their own ball and driving it forward. Jeff White, Mark Jamer, big job on Sandlands today. They'll try and run him to all parts of the MCG. And some experience coming back for the Dockers today. Mark Johnson and Chris Tarrant, who I think everyone will be having a look at. Mark Harvey signalled this early in the year about playing more experienced players on the road. It'll be interesting to see how both those players play this afternoon because they're probably playing for their careers, the pair of them. Aaron Sandlins was just terrific last Friday night, probably one of the best games I've seen a big man play. Mark Harvey said it may be a career-defining game, that game, when you look back at his career. Rhys Palmer, he's their heartbeat as a youngster in the midfield, and Peter Bell, who uh, is still the number one player in terms of getting disposals in this side, so they still need his input. Green starting on the forward line, that is good for Melbourne. Dodd went to him, bit of a skirmish in midfield. Carroll and Pavlich as they go down towards the goal. And we're underway. Sunday footy and bright sunshine. Expected that J Mark came straight at Sandilands. Off the ground by Sandilands. Solomon fell to the ground, tackled immediately, got a hand pass away. Melbourne there in number. Bruce's hand pass, not so good. Missed by Drum. Charging through was Miller. Comes back towards Drum. He's over the football. Solomon there too. Davey. Well, Crowley went to Gary Ablett last week. He's gone to Nathan Jones this week. So they've picked him, Jones, Fremantle, as the number one midfielder to target. So Jamar being very physical against Sandilands early. And with Jeff White starting on the interchange. Thanks, guys. Gee, the start's important, Tim. We've talked about it. But Melbourne, they were in the game against Geelong, obviously, at School Stadium, in a match that they probably had very little realistic chance of winning. But they've got a chance today if they can be with Frio in the first half. Dockers themselves have been pretty poor in opening quarters, but they led Geelong for nearly the whole match. Sandilands kick in and Solomon hard. Palmer's handball was good. Here's Ibbotson, who can kick a goal, and it's a good-looking kick, and they're on the board. The Dockers get the first. We're talking to some of the Docker people last week at the conclusion of that game. They've been really happy with the performance of Solomon. Doesn't get a lot of the ball, but he's hard. He's aggressive. There's a great tackle there by Carroll. He couldn't escape. He got the hands out. And they had the numbers around the ball. This is where they were able to share. Ibbotson, who's been terrific since he came into this side. And that's a great start for Fremantle. Jamer, awkward situation to hurt Sandilands there. Awkward bounce. No contact, really. Ibbotson's over the football. He's tackled by McLean. High tackle is the call. So Ibbotson has started well. A couple of early touches. Goes out wide. Chance for Crowley. He's about 60 metres from home. And there's a man on in the middle. That's Tarrant. Tarrant. It was ignored. Tarrant continues to run. Got there. Some holding. And Garland comes away. A little chip towards the outer side. Thornton overcommitted. Bait leads back. Didn't have the football. Bit stiff. Coming through is Davey. Well done by Davey to his own advantage. Then goes back to McLean. McLean towards half forward. Good mark, Miller. Miller right on the 50. Plays on to Robertson. Robertson long to full forward. Green. I just love him on the forward line. He's such a good player. Right on the line. Knocked him over. Not the contest. 50. Out, boys. But they're the three key forwards that will need to have big games this afternoon. Miller. Robertson and also this bloke Green. Green comes in, gets the goal. Scores the level of the G. He's been in terrific form, Brad Green. He's been averaging 25 touches in the last three weeks. Just see a physical start. Both sides will just test each other out in the early part of this game. You see Brock McLean kicking the ball forward. This is a great grab here by Miller, almost crashing into Robbo. Got the handball off and then just kicking the ball deep to Brad Green. And we know he's a good finish. I mean, he's not going to miss from there, but he is capable of kicking goals up and around the 50-metre arc. But it was well done the way they moved the ball forward then, Melbourne. So one goal kicker to another to David Neitz, the long-time captain, club record holder for the number of games played and number of games leading the club.
hopefully he'll be able to play some footy towards the end of the year out injured. So Green, four goals against Carlton here a couple of weeks ago and a good start. So all square. High tackles. Across the face. Straight to him, please. They've got to go spread on here. Sandlin's gone out wide on his own. So Bell, such an important player. Now Ibbotson again. Neat kick out wide. Well, Tarrant, his first touch, but he's not going to get a, a kick. It's going to be a free kick for holding on against Jeff Farmer. Time ticking. Guys, don't lose it. Don't give it away. I guess the matchup would have been Wheel and Farmer that everyone would have expected, wouldn't they, before yeah. Wheel and withdrew. Here's the free kick. Here's Garland, who's standing Farmer there. And there's a tug on the jumper ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. So Farmer right in front. He's he might have missed it. He might have had pity on his old team for a moment, I reckon. He doesn't miss too often from a set shot, Farmer. Maybe he looked up and saw the replay. <laughs> it, looked, it looked a bit soft, you're you right. Can't, you can't shepherd him, okay? The ball's more than five metres away there. If you shepherd him... An honest man. Okay. What has looked a bit worrisome for um, Melbourne in the early part is how it's loose good. their defenders have been the two times Fremantle have come forward. Bruce to the outer side, this is McDonald and their midfielders around those stoppages after those last two free kicks. There's a push in the back. Ibbotson will get another free. He started brilliantly. Fremantle able to peel off. Out in front of the Great Southern Stand as Tarrant gets a kick. Long into the forward line. Pavlich was the target. Off hands. This is Crawley. Comes away and finds White. He's on the ground now. So they made the tag. Jamar to White. Jamar's role to come out and make contact a little bit with Sandlins. This is Carroll. Has a decision to make here, but at his best in a hairy situation. Comes out towards right half back, McLean. They would have been doing a lot of work on this during the week, just clearing the ball from their defensive 50. They really struggled to get any fluency at this part of the ground last week. Carroll to McLean. Not sure about the kick. Farmer comes back with wonderful courage. What a mirror he came through and missed him. And now Tarrant inside the forward 50 has taken the mark about 35, 40 metres out. He's been free on four occasions when they've moved the ball inside their attacking half. This is great courage here by Farmer. Just not sure about non-skilled teams, all fairness to Melbourne, but handling the ball too much. Sometimes it's simple policy is the best policy. Down the middle, long. Green, Robertson, those sort of players on the forward line. But now it's Tarrant from 50. Needs a goal for his confidence. Likes it off the boot. Terrific, oh, Chris Tarrant. Well, that's a great start for him. As I mentioned before, each time the ball's gone into their attacking half, he's been free. They just seem to be a little lost at the moment, Melbourne. Here's their attempt to, to actually clear the ball. Courageous mark here by Farmer. Perhaps Davey could have done a little bit more to intercept that ball. But then on the turnover, Tarrant just got free. And that's a good finish by him. And that's an area of his game he's really struggled in. Here is Wanamiri. It was Davey earlier. Well done, Wanamiri. Back to McLean, getting a lot of it early. And Miller, who's uh, had a lively start, a third mark for him, but this one, tellingly, is inside the 50. Well, that's what he does really well, Miller. He actually pushes to the ball. He provides a target. Great play by Buonamiri here just to clear the ball. And then smart kick from McLean. Kicked a couple last week, Miller, against the Lions at the Gabba. So inside 40 metres. Tighty angle, probably about 60 degrees. Not a good kick. Won't be a score, but it might be a mark. Still in play. Green, a left footer. He's got Robbo out wide. Robertson, half a chance. Couldn't quite get the purchase. And well done by O'Brien getting back there along with Mundy. And they pushed it through for behind. So the Demons are seven and the Dockers at 14. Mundy to bring it in then. Interesting start. Melbourne getting plenty of the footy. Fremantle so far showing the finesse, Tim. Mundy. Close to the boundary line. Gilmore. Led inclusion for Headland. Drives it around the outer side. He's a lovely kick. Shammer feeds it inside. Crowley. Nice move by the Dockers. 
from end to end, down towards full forward, Pavlic, did he have the football, play on's the call, Bruce, too long intended for Jones, that was a wonderful tackle though, Bell goes after Farmer, Farmer paddles it in front, Frawley, stood his ground nicely, Garland, Bruce, low down, Bell a problem, Bell and Johnson, Johnson did well, worked under him, you well must get it out, please. Thank you. So Bell has played every game this year, but he wasn't going to play today, but he came in for Whelan to White. High possessions in the early part of this season, White, because he was the number one draft pick when the Dockers first came into the competition and played for them. Oh, over the shoulder. Robertson. No advantage, no advantage. Straight to him. So Green makes the first lead, and he's going to honour it. Never really got a crack at it. Gilmore got back and filled the hole. Jamo, well done. And then had no one really to go to, and the ball hits the post and another behind. So Melbourne having no trouble getting it inside 50, but they're having problems doing it cleanly. McManus on the rebound now. Gallen leads in the race. Knocked it in front of himself. Doing well like Foster. Wins a free kick. Push. Let him up. Let him up. Let him up, both of you get up. Give him the footy straight back. This is where Melbourne need to tighten up. Gilmore. Yeah, Out of side wing. This is better. Play on! Shammer offers. Gilmore told to play on. Take something off the kick. Here's Palmer. Right on the wing then. Murphy a lead, very wide. That's ignored. Good matchup, that. McLean and Palmer. Well done by Palmer. Likes to run it. Kicks inside the 50. Pavlich again. Flying over the top. Fisted away by White. Following up Palmer. Went to ground. Might get a free kick. No, you got him in the face. That's a free kick. Head over the footy. Right hard him work. In, the face. Yeah, mate. in fact, That's it's it. going to Foster. Well, that's just a, a soft, silly free kick to be giving away. Plays on. Mundy. Inside the 50, hangs it out to the right, oh, does not Jesse. come back. Matthew, three more. One more. That's it now. Just mark it for me, mate. So Docker's missing some Keep chances. Farmer, the, the obvious one mm. earlier. Wheatley to bring it in. Uh, That's inside the line. Straight inside. down the middle to White, the target. Front spot, Gilmore, Jamar at the back, Shammer, well done, got through, Palmer's busy early isn't he, sweeps that handball out wide, Mundy back to Palmer, Palmer inside the 50, not a bad looking kick coming back, he's got his first goal at the oh, MCG. It was right inside, wait, just watch that line mate. He's a real player, this kid. Not only does he get inside and win the ball, he puts his nose over the ball, he's brave, but he's a really good ball ca carrier as well. Good work there by Shammer just to get the ball clear. And he just gives the hand, give and go, and that's smart play, but it's a finish too. And already in the early part of this game, Ibbotson scored a goal, and now Palmer, two of their young players, doing well on the road for the Dockers. Bruce. And they kick it in so deep, it's very close to goal and comes off hands like that. Tim, we've got to do something. Well, just keep highlighting it, Dan. The third rush behind for them, and that's got a lot to do with the way they're bringing the ball in, isn't it? Fremantle rush uh, the behinds more than any other side in the competition, by the way. They are quite happy at just being able to spoil the ball over the line, reset, and then clear the ball. They're good from, this, they're, they're good from a kick in. So McFarlane wide. And then Shammer. And away Drum. So Drum's kick is a good one to McManus. It's been a remarkable footballer, McManus, with all the knee problems he's had over the years. Still playing very well at 32. He's kicked to the pocket. And terrific mark. Clean up, clean up, Jared. That's the way. I'm down. Get Headley up, get stuck down. that. <laughs> he just draws the ball, though, doesn't he? Like. He was probably in the worst position of three other forwards that were inside their attacking 50, but he just draws the footy. There he is just pointing to where he wants the ball to go, and now he'll double back. And he's a, got a good frame, and he used yeah. it well, didn't he? He's a big block of a lad. So a couple of behinds today. One of them a poster. 
He's got a good record at the MCG. He averages over four goals a game in his last seven. And that one never a chance. So three behinds to Matthew Pavlich in this opening term. And it has been a wasteful first quarter for the Dockers. That's a similar scoreline to last week, actually, against Geelong. 3-6 to 1-3. It's about what it was, I think, a quarter time. It's not the Cats trying to run them down today, I guess. It's uh, Melbourne. McDonald. Towards half forward, Bates gathers the bouncing ball. Not a good kick, though. This is O'Brien. First gamer. Across the ground. At least I think he is. I'll check that. I'm sure he is. And this is Mundy. Mundy from half back. Gee, they're finding some space. Solomon coming on the lead. Farmer knocked away by Bell. They battle after it. Jones, willing worker, only as far as Farmer who left it behind. In trouble, Crowley. Jones chopped it off and just as well it was intended for Farmer. He burrows in, taken to ground. No, Mike, not going anywhere. Up. Never dived on it. O'Brien did make his debut last year. Round 22. Terence now gone to the goal square against Frawley. Size advantage there if they can get the ball quickly. Thanks, Bruce. This is his second game then. I'll work that part out. Close to the line, Sandilands. Johnson bounces it down towards full oh, thoughts and holding on. Chris. And Frawley will get the free and kick four minutes out four from minutes quarter time. So plenty of work to do in the opening term, Frawley. Still a teenager. You, mate, you. High draft pick in the 2006 take. Johnson back to Murphy. And Murphy, not a great kick inside the 50. Tarrant wrestled to the ground there by Gala. No free kick then Frawley in slow motion. Johnson did well. Pavlich back to Tarrant. Decided not to go and have a shot. He brings it back as a good kick to Ibbotson. Gee, Melbourne were just indecisive, weren't they? They're just slow to react, aren't they? They're a side playing without any confidence. Judging by how far this kick from Ibbotson, or the first kick from Ibbotson that was a goal went through, he'll have no problem whatsoever making the distance from here. And remember last week, Tim, uh, well, you were with us a super. He kicked a goal outside 50 from a set shot. Thumping kick. I was there, Bruce. I was just very quiet last Friday night. <laughs> uh, were you there? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. It was a terrible kick in the end. It was a terrible piece of commentary and a worse kick, but a good mark by Pavlich. Somebody help me. No, no, it was a good piece of commentary. <laughs> Tim's got to work hard. <laughs> I called this beautifully too. I said he had no trouble making the distance. Uh, we've just been to Subiaco so often in the last fortnight, haven't we? Yeah, Tim, have you got a car? I still had an invitation to Mrs. C's place for a sandwich. Well, three behinds to Matthew Pavlich. Dennis has told us how many times he's hit the post in the last couple of years. He should go from here, and he's got his first. And the Dockers are away in the opening term. And the problems that beset Melbourne last week are evident already in the first part of this game, and that is clearing the ball from the defensive part of the ground quickly. Here's the kick from Ibsen, just <laughs> didn't get a piece of that at all. And as we see so often, it was the four that reacted quickest to the poor kick. Could get a bag today, couldn't he, Pav? If they get this sort of supply. Well, right now, Fremantle are playing as if they've had the burrito special at Grumpy's Mexican. They're finding a lot of space. <laughs> Here's the bounce. Umpire Ravon. Three men in charge today. James Stewart and Avon. Palmer once more. Again, bouncing the footy aggressively down a half forward. Johnson, good pluck. Hits the ground running. Tarrant on the lead. Therein lies the difference, Dennis. As soon as he hit the ground, Johnson, he swiveled around, created the play, Tarrant read it down the field Good further, man, and then provided the lead. But he actually forced that play. Good play here by Palmer again. He's a very good ball controller. Here he is. Bang. So Chris Tarrant. Been so lively in this term. From 40 metres out, he's got another one. Tarrant is back in town.
It's great to see, isn't it? Somebody who's really struggled in their AFL career to come back and to find the ball like he has in the early part of this game. It is a poor defensive effort from Melbourne, but here's Reese Palmer again. He actually runs and carries the ball. He's been a terrific acquisition as a youngster. And there it is. Johnson hits the ground. Tarrant reacts as soon as he sees Johnson hit the ground, runs into that space. It's a 15-metre kick. So a horror start for Melbourne yet again. Biggest score for the Dockers under Mark Harvey in any match in the opening term. Sandlands has non gone, now gone to the goal square and all the other Frio players have moved up the ground away from him. So Gilmore doing the work in the ruck. Foster was in there first, but uh, held up. Come on, Brent. Yes, Brent. Straight back, guys. So Straight Maloney back. there, played a couple of seasons at Geelong. He's in his fourth season now with the D's. White front spot. Gilmore did really well to get over the top. Wheatley. He's earned a free Paul kick. Wolverine. Paul Wheatley's kick. Paul Wheatley in the back. Straight back, mate. Go on. So Melbourne just with... About 90 seconds to do something in this opening term. McDonald got it from Wheatley. Not a good kick, but Davey Wanamiri, I should say, held up for a moment. Well done, though, to McLean. McLean's kick inside the 50. Mm. Green on the lead. I think Robbo half was going to go for it. Okay. Goes back to Robertson from uh, Miller. And then the kick to the goal square. Over the top of Jama. Shamma getting back to Gilmore. And then Gilmore down the line. It's a well way to kick. Johnson though, it's a bit of a problem here, Bell outran him for the moment, then Johnson did well, Garland hasn't quite got control of it, now goes back inside to Bruce, and then Bruce to Bell. Bell on the wing, White, Maloney, 70 metres from goal, well, the other Bell, gee whiz, Bell, he read it so well then Peter Bell, last experience, Solomon, been very handy, Ibbotson around the outer side, running down towards half forward. Pavlich punched away by Carroll, working over time. McDonald to Wheatley. Wheatley goes for distance. Bait in best position, should mark and does. Now he's 70 metres out, we're down to eight seconds. So uh, watch that clock, Bruce. Don't take your eyes off the clock. It's running again. Well, they'll run it down themselves here. Kicks from 70, but he's too far out to score balls in the air. And we presume that's time. 5-6 to 1-3, quarter time, Sunday football of the G, and Melbourne have made a horror start. Some worries there. Leo McKern was missing, but the crowd loved vitriol of the Bailey. Down okay, goes up, up. Bruce. Hand pass over the shoulder from White. Coming up the ground there, Mundy getting back quickly. Palmer, he's got an appetite for it. Swings it across the ground. How are they getting free either side of the centre circles at those set plays? Solomon, who fanned out, kicks inside the 50. Pavlich, had it punched away by Rivers. It's out of bounds in the pocket. Pavlich wants to argue the point there said his arms were grabbed and the umpire five metres away and the Pav does it with a smile a wry smile no, no, to umpire no. Stewart so boundary throw in no, Sanderlins and White Sanderlins probably got the tap and then uh, got the clearance but it didn't actually get past the contest again and Knock Solomon in. crashing in hard he's had a terrific start again today Ibbotson brought to the ground by White no, no prior opportunity. Sorry, fellas, ball was locked there. Here's where he's no, so no, dangerous, no, no. Sandilands. No, no, no. Inside 50 here to stoppage. Both right, holding. Bang. Yep, Bell oh. bang, free kick. In the back. Oh, it was his tap that forward. actually set up Bell. Aaron, just go away, you got the free kick. No, he fell straight into his back. And one of the big stories of the week, I would have imagined, in Perth was the fact that Peter Bell's leaving Geraldton to go back to Perth and it, Peter, stay there. Here's means the he can train with the club and who knows? I mean, he's certainly playing well enough to play again next year. That's which right. He's on 280, he'll get to 300. Whose idea was it, Dennis, for him to come back and live in Perth? I think he surprised the club by saying he would. I think his wife's working back in Perth or got a job back then, that's part of it as well. But he's kicked the goal. What a remarkable oh, footballer he's been over a long period of time.
We talked about Sandlin's amazing game last Friday night. He really was the general out there on the field, and here he is again. He is just so tall. That was just a swat, but they cleared that path for Bell to run into. It was a set play. They're inside their 50, and then this is a good finish by Bell. But he just gives the players at ground level such an armchair ride, Sandlers. And despite the fact he's been in Geraldton, his form this season has been pretty good, coming off a season's high 31 against Geelong on Friday Night Football. Sandlin's wow. wary of White. White knocked it down. Oh, Solomon no, got it. Heard the umpire. Helped on its way there, McDonald. Leading in the race, Bell. Quickly after it. Dodd lost it. Green dug it out of there. McLean nicely worked. McDonald to Wheatley alongside the centre circles to half forward. Bonamiri has marked it. Right on the 50. Now he's got a decision to make. If he goes long, he needs to score. Don't put it too close to the goal, young man. Sends it long down towards full forward. They didn't touch it. McClellan wants a free. It went through its shoulder height. All clear. Well, that's been their most positive bit of play so far this afternoon. They won the ball well on the wing, and they're actually able to share the ball. They opened up the central part of the ground. Here they go. This is a constructive handball. That's a great handball again. Then Wheatley had a couple of options on. In the end, he made the correct decision. And I actually thought when Wanamiri marked this ball that he might have been too far. He's kicked from outside 50, but it's carried the distance with a good bit of work on the line here from Jamar. To White. There's just a little bit more urgency about it at the moment. That's a poor handball. I won't speak too quickly. White goes back to Frawley. Oh, Farmer to Solomon. Now that's a, not a good kick, but it's going to roll, roll through for a goal. There you go. Solomon wobbles it through, and they get another one. Tim, what, what was I saying about urgency and... God, that... Well, they, they, during the week, five players, five Melbourne players, were asked where they're going wrong at the moment. Jones said decision making's poor. Jeff White said accepting new game plan. They're a little bit tardy in that area. Green said skills not up to scratch. Maloney said they've got to be better in the first three quarters of the game. And Cameron Bruce said they need to play instinctively. Mm, they're now, all right. I reckon we're, they're right. I reckon we actually saw that the last passage of play. <laughs> Maloney with McManus. Bartram, was it high? Probably not. Bell. Oh, brilliantly done by Farmer. Cut it off, runs in and kicks his first goal on the eighth for the Dockers. Well, that was great defensive pressure there from Frio. And this is an area of their game that they improved last Friday night against Geelong too. Here's the winning of the ball first. And that's just an instinctive kick. He actually kicked to a, a, a two on three at that stage. But then they worked hard. There's Shammer. There's McManus applying the tackle. Shammer again. And then they coughed the ball up. And that's as simple as you would possibly ever have it on an AFL field. In space, McManus. Can he get through? Going to the ground to Dodd. Back it comes to Drum. He's an emerging player, Drum, like him. Bell, Shammer, short one. Foster, and now scuttling away as Farmer towards half forward. Johnson's been lively. Back to Farmer. 70 metres from goal. Pavlich clears a path for himself. Goes back. That's a lot of body to move. Pavlich running in will check side and kick a goal. All clear. Well, that's just ridiculously easy. I mean, Melbourne had the ball inside their 50 where Miller took the mark. It was a good mark. He handballed it on here to David. I'm not quite sure what that was all about. He twisted and turned, got himself into trouble. And then they just didn't work hard enough to get back into a defensive position. And that's just body strength from Pavlis just getting Jared Rivers out of the way far too easily. Yeah, yeah we'll have a look, Grace. Smart footballer, isn't he, Pavlich? He just plays oh, yeah. the percentages so well, and he did that extremely well. So the hierarchy of Melbourne, Paul Gardner, and Paul McNamee. Having trouble staying awake, Paul Gardner. It's going to be a, a long day at the G unless something happens in a hurry. But McDonald quickly out of the 50 to the Bronx. Cheers. White made a contest. Robertson, Miller, hooking back. They've got one.
There was an enormous Bronx cheer then from the Melbourne fans when Melbourne actually kicked the ball. That's all they need to do, just simplify this game plan. Get the ball into the forward line as quickly as you can. Make a contest. Try and win the ball back again. Here we go. Up at the centre bounce. Tap. Out of there from McDonald. Kick it long. OK, it's a scrubby kick. It's a two-on-two -two here. They don't actually take the ball in the air. Comes to ground. Robbo handballs it away to M uh, Miller. And you screw the ball over your shot. Let's just simplify it and see whether or not they can't win their way back into this game. Sanderlands. Ibbotson. Got a bit of purchase, kicks to the pocket, Frawley of town, got a beautiful bounce, and then a clever kick. Well played, Chris. Oh. Out in. <laughs> well, that's a touch of class. It's your day when that happens, isn't it? It, it is your day. You'd be surprised at how often AFL players practice kicking those dribblers along. The, here's the Sandlins again. I mean, that's a beautiful palm to Ibbotson. That's a grubby kick again to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Frawley just couldn't pick it up. He knew exactly what he was doing there, though, Tarrant. He laid the ball across his boot, got the right spin. And Solomon has had so much space today, hasn't he? And then Solomon goes to the pocket and Farmer on a lead. That's just terrible football there by Melbourne, though. They saw the ball was going to be turned over. At that point, you've actually got to start to move towards your direct opponent. It's just non-thinking football. Stay that line, Jeff. There wasn't a Melbourne player within 50 metres of McManus or Solomon out on this flank. That's 20 seconds! He missed a very easy shot in the opening term, Farmer, and then the one he got in the second was a, a give-me running goal. This is a tight one. It's a good looking kick, he's given it a chance, not quite, and it'll be rushed through from behind. Raiders out! I mean, that's one thing, I mean, without harbouring the point, I mean, that's one thing you can do, whether you're in form or you're out of form, is actually pick up a direct opponent or a player that's free as soon as it appears the ball's going to turn over. Yep, nothing to do with ability there. Wheatley. Oh, wow. Garland's going to get 50 because he was claimed by Farmer, who wasn't in the contest. Why would you just pay advantage there? Well, I was going to say, as it turns out, even that's hurt them. So the 50 takes Garland to midfield. Bate breaks for him. That's a terrible kick towards Bate. Bate couldn't take the mark. Should have. Paddles it across to McLean. That's a beautiful kick. Wanamiri has marked about 35 metres out. Slight angle. Well, he's Austin Wanamiri. He's looked as dangerous as any Melbourne player on the ground this afternoon. You're right Austin, about uh, Bate. He's a little bit rusty. Dennis you, finally line, got the ball out in front of him, but this is a good kick inside Chris their 50. Thank okay. you. Here we go. 10 8, players 3 5. Melbourne at the moment out of touch. Seven minutes out, seven and a half minutes from half time. Wanamiri has missed. Well, to get back in it, they've got to kick a couple of back to back goals. Rick, what's happening? Well, if you're wondering where Melbourne are going to get the goals from, things are worse now because Russell Robinson has just lift, limped off the ground. He's been assessed by the doctor at the moment, just walking around the boundary. He's looking very sore. Ryan! Not good news, is it, for the D's? The leading goal kicker coming into the day at 11. Green had nine. Before today's match, there's Robert. So Dodds kick to centre wing. Crowley did well. He kept his eyes on. Now gets away from Maloney. Interesting shepherd there from Shamers. He ran across in front. And then Crowley centering ball. Bill made the contest. Sandilands to Palmer, and then Palmer out in front of Farmer. Missed by Garland in Farmer, and then Pavlich couldn't quite get onto it, and Garland did well to Green, who kicked the opening goal for Melbourne today. Oh, good effort by McFarlane on the back of Bate, and then White to try and run him down. McFarlane, but too easy in the end, comes back to Dodd. And heard the umpire say play on, and then McFarlane squares it again, and they can reload here. Drum lays it off. Awkward looking kick from Palmer across the ground, taken by Mundy. Will we go back to the middle? Plenty of Fremantle players in that vicinity. Shammer's got it. In two minds though, Shammer. Good pressure from Davey. Ibbotson back to Shammer. It needs a kick. And he obliges to Johnson. Switches it over the top to Crowley. Crowley, very good last week and the week before. 
Drives it long inside the forward 50. Oh, good mark at the back. Carroll off balance. Just lunging back and took it plainly to Waitley. Just under six minutes remaining till halftime now. Waitley around the outer side. Maloney with bait on. Sounds like a fisherman. Yeah, I get you. Here's bait. <laughs> Just forward to the wing. Oh, run down by Sandilands. The ultimate indignity. Aaron Sandilands! Well, both wow. got caught then, then. <laughs> he was run down like Perth Airport. They're doing something about that, aren't they, Dan? Oh. Here's Taron. He's kicked three so far Nine. in the match. Clever kick. And Mundy takes the mark. And poor old bait. I mean, he dropped the mark, they, and that's what put him in. But they were the away gun. then too, Melbourne. I mean, they had plenty yeah. of space to operate in out there. Up. He Tear just up. had no feel for what was around him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And constructive again on the forward line. He's okay. played very well today. Probably a good day to be coming back and needing to show your stripes, isn't it? Because you'll have a few mates that'll play well today. Yeah. Might back burn that piece gone. of the footage, though. I think Bruce wouldn't show it to the grandkids. Stay there, Paul. No. Monday. 40 metres out, straight in front, good kick, and they get their 11th goal, the Dockers. We've talked a lot this afternoon about how bad the Demons are, but let's uh, just concentrate on Fremantle, because that performance last Friday night was an excellent performance against the best side in the competition. They don't deserve to be where they are on the ladder. Their talent would suggest that they're a better side than that. They win today, they're two and five. Not the result they would have liked at the beginning of the season, but they've had a pretty hard run in the early part of this year, and their performances haven't actually been that bad. So the margin is 50 points now. One of their better young players, David Mundy. So versatile. Sandilands on the way down, flicked it. Stolen though by J Mark. Mark taken by McFarlane. Robertson back on the ground. That's good news. McFarlane. Johnson. Is it left half back? Kicks beyond the wing. Coming up to get it. Tarrant. Thank you. So Tarrant, little short pass to Solomon, like the Cracker Brothers. Solomon just pops it to space. And Murphy comes up and takes the mark. So Murphy would be about 35, 40 metres from goal. Should get the distance. He's gone back a long way. That's being in sync with your teammates, a kick like that, isn't it? Yep. The understanding between Tarrant and Solomon has been good. They've had a couple of little interchanges. Murphy hangs it right. It's not coming back. Minor score. We talk about Solomon, he's had 11 Go touches on. this afternoon. None of them have been easy touches too. He wins the ball in hard spots, but he's taken the ball inside 50 on six occasions Thanks too. So well. he's doing his work up the ground. He was terrific last week, wasn't he, in that first half. It's a good mark by Jones. I mean, he kicked four last week against Brisbane Jones. A kick to a contest and ball in. Maloney against the odds. He's had a quiet afternoon, Maloney, just four touches. So Melbourne, have a look at that. This is round seven. And they haven't outscored the opposition in any of the first three quarters in any of those games. And they won't be in the opening two again today. Johnson's little toe poke was clever enough. Melbourne with a chance here. Robertson couldn't quite take it. It was a hard ball for McDonald, but he bit a free. First one, Russ. Draws it. Thanks, Russ. Russell. Right on 50 it is. Fair decision. Well, this is uh, a long kick for Robbo. Kicked over 70 goals back in 05. He's been in the LGK on a number of occasions, and that one he's hung it out. He got the distance, but oh, never a chance. Down. So he's struggling a bit, isn't he? And uh, he's in a team that's really struggling. Here's Gilmore running away, as is his want, and he's trying to get the ball all the way down to Tarrant, and he's managed it. Tarrant, left half forward, kicks to the 50, from behind, getting it on the ground was Warnock. 
Rivers follows up. Little looping hand pass. Wheatley. Carroll around the outer side. Morton has been quiet. Back to Wheatley. Confronted Wheatley. He's a long kick and probably needed to. Morton back to Wheatley. Crowd want him to kick. He does play request. He goes long down towards right half forward. Coming through his green. Got the staggers. Hand passes forward. Good things happen when you go long. Wanamiri though. Fell over. Feeds it back. Bait. Still can't pick it up. Well, he's trying to um, over the football fawns and he threw it. How quick was Wanamiri a moment ago? Actually contested the ball in the air and then he was the first player back to be uh, running back into the space to create some definitely a throw there with so many clubs tim playing the same style of football playing follow the leader it wouldn't hurt for one club and Fremantle did this when they first came into the competition to break the mold and those, play a completely different brand of football those long kicks are really causing Fremantle some concern at the back here's mcdonald jared nisham the man who Brought in some revolutionary thinking when he was short on players, and McDonald is missed. That hurts. I think when you get to a certain part on the ground, that's what the player should be inst instructed to do. Particularly if you take a quick look and you see that you, you're facing a four on four, it's different if the numbers are set behind the ball and it's been a slow delivery. But when you move the ball quickly from one end of the ground to the other, take your chance. Yep, O'Brien's kick out wide, a good one to Gilmore. So Gilmore coming in for Headland. So Headland, the last couple of weeks has been a late withdrawal. He's had some knee problems. Gilmore's kicked to half forward. Warnock. His brother didn't make the team for the Dockers today. And then McDonald, who missed the goal a moment ago with Shammer ball in. Well, we saw a pretty depressing first half from West Coast on Friday night. And we've seen one from the Demons today. There's a bit of promise today. And... Um, not delivered so far. No, the Dockers have been good. Free kick, I think, coming back to McManus. Is Ricky talking to Dean Bailey at halftime? Uh, that's the plan. Something Tom Westfold on Friday night and Dean Bailey for Rick. But uh, well done to John for doing that. Johnson's kicked a full forward. Murphy and then Rivers coming across, building it through. So a lackluster first half from the Demons and a very good one from the Dockers. And the scoreboard does tell the tale. Tarrant's been good. What a mirror has been a bright light on a dark day, really a dull day for the Demons. Cav's done his bit and Freo making the running and looking good at half time. Eleven ten plays three eight at quarter time. The margin was twenty five points. Well, West Coast kicked eight mm. of the first ten goals after half time on Friday night. And so what they did, they just upped the ante, didn't they, on Friday night? They actually just played with a lot more intensity, and then things started to happen. It can happen for Melbourne again in the early part of this third quarter, but they have to take up the challenge. It is not a time now for them to go back into their shells. They need some leadership out there. Bartram, number three. Jones is a potential leader. He's only had four touches. Crowley's done a really good job on him in the first half, but he needs to get himself into this game. Crowley tracking his man. As we start this second half, a beautiful bounce. Well, the Ruckman up, made contact, and then it fell at their feet. Davey and his kick smothered. Sandlin's over the football. So ball up coming. Chief. Possession winners on the ground so far. Reese Palmer with 13 leads the way for the Dockers. McLean with 13. Brock McLean leads the way for Melbourne. Here he is again. Almost led all comers for a moment. But realising he was about to lose the mantle, it was snatched off him by Reese Palmer. Thanks, boys. Cameron Bruce is up there too. He's got 13. So there's a bounce alongside the centre circles. Jamar missed by Palmer. Bertram, his hand pass went only as far as Mundy, who's got it now from Bell. Goes with the outside of the boot, inside the forward 50. Johnson within Bell, Melbourne's Bell. Got a fist on it. Coming through beautifully and finishing. No, to the left, Solomon misses. 
A little haphazard with the yeah, kick. Two, well, two Fremantle me. players well, actually well, reacted well, well, before any of the Melbourne players in. Terrific bit of play there. You, you did that once at a Waverley, a bit more spectacularly. Oh, yeah. I would hope so. He's been good, Solomon. Not, not as good as you, Tim, but he's been good. <laughs> he's bait. Who hasn't been good, but he's been, as we said, coming back for the first time today. And that's a good mark. Miller took six marks in the opening half. He showed a bit. No. Play Kick play up, to the play. wrong spot. Play up, go. And now maybe a chance for McLean. But couldn't get a handle on it. He's just looked off today, McLean. He's had 13 touches, but he just hasn't looked sharp. That's a great mark there by Miller, though. If they can get the ball there often enough, they've got a winner across half forward in him. Sandilands and Jamar. Sandilands pretty easily down towards Ibbotson. He was held on to. Did well, Ibbotson, but uh, then Green got it back to Wheatley. Wheatley to Robertson. Back to Wheatley. And then Wheatley gets reasonable purchase. And not accurate, though. No behind. It will be fascinating to see how this second half unfolds. The Fremantle, do they have the killer instinct to really burn Melbourne off and do the demons have the heart to really make some sort of a run we're about to find out Pavlich gets it from Solomon and drives it down towards half forward hangs a long time in the air intended for Tarrant Farmer at the back currently onto the boot it bounces out of bounds in the pocket strange to relate Melbourne look most dangerous in their forward line they do, but they just can't get that's, it there. That's, that's most unusual, isn't they, it? Yeah, they, once they get it there, they actually look like they're capable of scoring, at least making some space. <laughs> if they can get it there quickly, it's even better. But at the moment, of course, Fremantle, workmanlike, not brilliant, but they're doing well enough. And good for the confidence as McLean brings it out. Missed by Bartram. Taken by Davey. Sweeping hand pass. Green back intended for Bartram. He's in trouble now. Got it back to Green. Green's hand pass when a kick would have been better advised. Keeping it in front was Wheatley. Cleared a path for Green. Well done by Wheatley. Well done by Green. Here's Brew 60 metres out. Kicks for goal. This will run on and miss. I didn't mind him doing that. I mean, Robbo's looked back at him and saying, well, what about me? I made some space then. But he was inside 50. He had plenty of time to steady and finish it off. Did he say that or sing it, what about me? <laughs> Robbo. <laughs> McFarlane short. I'll get back to you. Here's Bell. Gee, we've asked him some hard questions today, haven't we? Tough well, ones. he lip reads. He said he did. Play on! So Bell decides to go safely to McFarlane. Good swing man, McFarlane. He can play at either end. Now Dodd wide. Very, very wide. Tarrant coming up and a boundary throw in. I don't think Mark Harvey would have said to his players at halftime, most of you will have next weekend off. There's no games. Don't leave anything in the tank. You can deplete yourself. We need a big win. And they need some percentage boosting too. All of that. Now I think Palmer's going to get the free kick for a block. Play on. And Palmer away. Gee, he's impressive, isn't he? Taken seventh in the draft last year and he's made an instant impression. It's an awkward looking kicking style and he's on the right. Solomon couldn't quite, and then oh. Wheatley had it and left it, but Garland did well. Wanamiri has been pretty good. Kicks the ball to centre wing, and Miller's hands have been terrific. Now Davey goes to... No, he doesn't go to Robertson. He was going to, and then kicks the ball to centre half forward, and it just really gets to green. Dare I say it? Dennis, it was. Centimeter perfect, Bruce. He started his second half well green. He just caressed this ball, Davey, and it just cleared Mundy's outstretched hand. Well, this is what Green does really well. He is a beautiful kick. Kick four goals in one game this year. He's kicked 35 goals in a season. They need it. They need about five after it. His kick is a good one. And it's got the distance. And they get the first goal after halftime. And that's important because they need to start this second half well. They need it to up the ante and show a little bit more intensity in their play. They're actually able to win. This is Palmer. This is the poor kick on his non-preferred side, which is his right foot. He actually took one too many bounces and put most of the forwards out of position. But that was another contest by Miller and Davey at ground level. And they're just finding their targets inside. They're attacking 50. In fact, they've been able to match Fremantle this afternoon in that area. 
And that goal by Brad Green broke a string of seven consecutive points for the Dees. In the same time, Fremantle have kicked one four, so goals have been scarce. And the margin is 43, Fremantle's oh, way. Right. Again, when they were grounded, Sandlin's got it. McLean has it. There's a whistle off the ball. Free kick, Bell. Hey, oh, kick. Hey, Crowley, Crowley. Crowley's free kick. Oh, kick. Oh, oh, oh. Free kick against oh, Nathan oh, Jones. Oh, oh. the umpire sorting it out. Peter Bell oh, scuttles oh, away, goes down towards half forward. Oh, oh. Almost to Pavlich, spilt it. Mundy's over the football. Wheatley did well for Nessing. Went back, sliding in Ibbotson. Opportunity there for Johnson falling to the ground. Bell extricated himself from a tight situation. Beautiful hand pass, Sandlins. And now O'Brien storming into space. And he's hung it out to the left of behind. That's fine there, Chris. So Sandlins there. And Jamo both going early. And then the Crowley free kick there. Holding onto his jumper. So Garland wide, Bruce the target, good mark. Peter, 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 thanks mate. The 232s together, one does match the age and the other might match the disposals at the end. He's been pretty good, Bruce. McLean wide to bait. Nothing coming easy for him today. McDonald to White to McDonald. Wasn't a good handball by White. It was behind McDonald. He had to wait. And then McLean. It's all slow motion, isn't it? Oh. And then bait run down. And then uh, oh, McDonald. This is scrubby footy, boys. You ask for it. You're getting scrubby. Uh, Miller gets it from Robbo for the second time today. Robbo passes to Miller and they get a goal. That was a scrubby goal. That's as scrubby as you could possibly make a goal, but in the end it was effective. The, the, the tackling was good from Fremantle. They were just able to get themselves free, and they kept pushing the ball forward. In the end, something eventuated, but they got the ball there quickly inside 50, and then Robbo just finished it off by handballing it to Miller, who's been probably one of their better players this afternoon. It's just effort. If you look at their midfield, they can match Frio's midfield. First time today, the Dees have managed back-to-back -back goals. Good pressure initially from Fremantle, but Melbourne had the numbers and they broke it. Back to 38 points. White and Sandlins, clean possession to the Giant. Swings it out very wide, hangs a long time as you saw. Took a while to come down. Shammer, busy. Bait beat him though. Bartram went looking for Bait, chopped off by his teammate Bell. White, now Morton. Bit of spring in the step of Melbourne. At least for the moment, Peter Bell. What a Miri slaps it out to a voice. Bruce overran it, charging in O'Brien. Miller's been very good. That's a shining light today. Comes back here to McDonald, who goes again to Miller. Miller forward of the wing. Morton is loose inside the forward 50. He's taken the mark. Again, it's one out in the forward line. Robbo wants an angle deep. Robbo should mark this. Oh, Robbo should have marked it. Slung. It went about five oh, metres, Robertson was taken high. Well, oh, Russell Robertson has been a hero for so long in this Melbourne team. May have been partly obscured. That's the best I can do for Robbo there. You're being kind. I know that, but I like Robbo. We all like Robbo. He's Ibb dropped a sitter. <laughs> Ibbotson to Mundy. To Foster, back to Mundy. And then to Gilmore, who... Did well. He was able to create some space for himself and then a long ball deep inside 50. Garland's run to White. And Melbourne just with a little sniff here. Now they've got players everywhere. Bate and McLean together. Will Bate go back to McLean? Decides not to. He keeps oh, going. Kicks OK good. in the end. This is Robbo a lot further out than he was a moment ago. You're right, Bruce. This game's changed. We're seeing three players for Melbourne for the first time this afternoon. Gee, wouldn't you love him to kick a goal here? I don't, that sounds so obvious, but A for him and B for the match, it would be three in a row. He's good enough. He's good enough, all right. Wow.
Well, for one of the few times this afternoon, when the ball broke at half back, it was Melbourne that was running to space. Now, we hardly saw that at all in the first half. They had two options out wide when they actually won the ball in the defensive part of the game at the ground. And that's a good finish by Bate inside 50 again. Robbo just leading up. That's the correct target. Blow his eyes. But this was just a wonderful finish by Robbo. Great goal. And certainly on top with the disposals in this term, Melbourne getting a lot of the football. And what it is is running football. Something Fremantle had in the first half. Sandlins directs it down. McLean's got it this time. Falling over though was McDonald. Down goes Shammer in the midst of a couple of Ds. We'll have a bounce. Coming into this game, I thought one advantage that they might have would be their midfield, Melbourne. I thought they'd be able to match Fremantle, maybe even shade them. And in the early part of the second half, that's exactly where they're getting on top. Sandlins and White find a draw this time. Off the ball, there's a whistle and a free kick is going Melbourne's way. Davey was being held. Now they fan out, comes to White. White goes down towards half forward and Maloney. Maloney's got it a long way from home. Little chip pass, awkward half volley. Miller ran into Shammer, put the head down, battles after it. Well, a reward for courage there. Miller put the head down. Shammer inadvertently took him high. He was after the footy too. Now Miller, short, McLean, and on the lead, Robbo. He's feeling it. They've stopped working, Docker, the Dockers. They're just not working hard enough for the moment. Mark Harvey, a little bit worried too, put an extra play behind the ball. Pavlich pushed himself up onto the ball. There's a free kick. Shammer just going head first onto that. And here's Robbo just getting free of McFarlane. Just flirting with the idea of the pass. Now he decides it takes one. He was the one, but he's missed across the face of behind. It's a five goal game. And after the Dockers led by. 50 at half time. They did lead by 39 last week, Tim, and they had a couple of big leads. Mm. That was flirting with it. Admittedly, they were in um, Group 1 company last week, and today they're not playing the top team in the competition. Drums kick out wide. How would you describe the opposition, Bruce? Michael Johnson. Uh, I'm going to think about that. A maiden of Maui. Yeah. Well, they're a maiden this year, Dennis. Right. In fact, they, if, they get, if they lose today, they'll be 0 7 for the second time in, well, in consecutive years, and that's never happened to them before or to anyone else for 40 years. Oh, yeah. okay. That's a real win to Melbourne, too. They're actually able to slow Fremantle on the kick in, hold them up all the way down the ground, and then get the opportunity now of winning the ball back. So maybe a maiden at Menangatang. <laughs> Tossed in. Sandlins and White. White with a backhander. McLean's over the footy. So an interesting stage in this game. I mean, time, not a problem. A long way to go. Ten and a half minutes to three-quarter time. As Pavlich has pushed himself up onto the ball. So easy for a side like Frio, who dominate a first half, to go in and feel content about it all and come out a little bit soft. They need to be careful. They're dancing in a dangerous ballroom at the moment. McDonald gave it to Maloney. Maloney on the bounce to Green. Davey finds a way through and kicks a goal. And how direct was that? They won the ball again from the stoppage. They stayed in the central part of the ground. They moved the ball quickly into their forward line. And that's where they're going to be damaging. I mean, Green got the ball first and then over to Davey. Davy and Wanamir are very quick players, dangerous at ground level, but you've just got to get the ball there quickly with some space to operate in. They're right back in this game now, Melbourne. Look at those inside 50s. They've halved the margins. 50 at half time, 25. You said a second ago they're right back in this game. Do you actually believe they can win from here? They've got any chance at all? Absolutely. Jamo went early against Gilmore. More importantly, Bruce, I think they're actually starting to believe they're in the game and they can win too. Well, in the last three weeks, they've actually outscored the opposition in the final quarter, but the matches have been over. They may put themselves into a winning position at three-quarter time for the first time this year. If they can get within two or three goals. And they're closing on that at the moment. They're within four and a bit. 
So the Dockers have got to up the ante now. Oh, no. no. Now, this is a great challenge because... Footy, fellas. He's trying to get the footy. The momentum of the game has actually shifted, so Melbourne have got the momentum the now. Give me room at the back. The Dockers have to win back the momentum, and it's around these stoppages. Well, Jamie, a bit stiff there. Pavlich, a quick kick forward. Solomon, well done by Frawley. Running hard, Murphy, and now Farmer swoops on it. He's got Solomon out wide. Still unsure, goes back to Murphy. I think he was wanting the one-two. Didn't quite get it. Foster, terrific stuff coming from uh, Davey. And then Ebertson's kick was a good one. Touched on the line, though. Warnock back there with Rivers. They've played that together a couple of times today, the 27 and 37. And the Dockers get the behind. So Melbourne suddenly out of their slumber, aren't they? They're alive and... Well, I won't say they're well, but they're certainly pressing. To himself, Wheatley runs it up, spears a pass to the 50, and Maloney, just more energy now, more verve about them. Maloney to Wheatley, who sprinted up the ground, needs a, <laughs> needs a shepherd, almost got one. Is he taken high? Not according to the umpire. Matt is not. Green's got it now. Green. In from the side, the leap there from Palmer. It was intended for Bruce. Knocked up in the air by Johnson. Haven't seen a lot of him. It's Michael Johnson. Ibbotson, seen a fair bit of him and Palmer. Now Johnson to Johnson. In midfield, this is McManus. McManus sends a long kick, and that's a very good one. Tarrant could have been held. No, free. Pushed across the line by a man lunging forward down there. That was Warnock. Behind. Let's go down to Ricky. Injury concern for Fremantle. Luke McFarlane just limped off the ground. He caught a knock just to his lower back and hip area. He's just getting work done on that at the moment. So they've had to move him off Robbo. They've had to put Stephen Dodd to him. And Robbo's look lively. We can this turn. That's a very poor kick. And McManus gets onto it and then goes back to the top of the square. Should have taken the mark. McDonald almost a score assist here to Murphy. Hooks back. That poster, eh? He was let out of jail there. <laughs> Should have taken the mark, <laughs> McDonald. That was such an attacking punch, though, too. Not just the fact that he punched it, but where he punched it, too. Just square of where he was. So decision-making, Tim, is going to be really interesting here for Melbourne. I mean, it's been one of many problems they've had this year. Let's see how well they go now with some pressure on in the game. That was a bad decision, too. Kicking to one on two, and they lost it. And, and the that's ball a, comes in and marked by this man, Murphy, who has a chance to redeem himself. That's the key, though. Decision-making is easy when you don't have any pressure on you. Now, if Fremantle actually come back with some real pressure, we'll see whether or not Melbourne have improved or not from their first half. Well, Melbourne broke a string of seven behinds with a goal. Fremantle a chance to do likewise here. Murphy, pretty sharp angle. We're right behind him, and he's missed comprehensively. Never on line. Seven and a half minutes out from three-quarter time, and Fremantle have responded to the challenge now, suddenly finding more of the football. And they're shuffling them through full back at the moment. Melbourne, this is about the fourth player from the last four behinds to kick it in. It's Green. Good mark, Warnock. Strong mark. Bate offers a lead. Morton coming on the angle. Not required. Bate. And that could well be 50. Non-thinking footy there by Drum. He was beaten. And he kept coming. Back, so back on the 50, <laughs> Bates got the footy. And Melbourne going to where they're most dangerous. McLean offers a lead. Going back is Robertson. Bates, well, he puts it very close to that goal line again. And the point is not what they need. They need a contest about 15 metres out. Get crummers all around it. Spread the defence. It's just a long point in the end, isn't it, when a kick goes that deep to a pack. Yep. You're quite right. Just kick it to the top of the square. Ten metres out from the top of the square. That's the dangerous kick. You've got one Amira and Davy at ground level. And so Dodd gets it out inside the attacking 50 for the Demons. And Robertson, it's a bit high, but uh, now he's gone, I think, for throwing it. Incorrect disposal. Yep. No, you go. Go through, go through. Yep. So Shammer. Had a tough year last year, Shammer, with the appendix and then the, the bowel problems he had, so only played the seven games. That's too loose. Yep. Foster. Crowley. 
Richie Crowley's done a wonderful job on Jones. Jones just four disposals to him halfway through this. we well, getting towards the end of three quarter time. Well, Crowley was good on Abbott last week too. Sean, Sean, and Thompson the week before. He sticks to a task well. Watch the ball. So Jamar and Gilmore. So Sandlin's getting a rest again. Foster trying to barge through. McLean got hold of him. Straight up, straight up, straight up. Stand up now. So a full goal to new quarter for the Fair Demons the as they've... Don't hold off the footy. ...work their way back into this match. Gilmore and Jamar lock up. Uh, the Ruckman touched the ball. Bartram got the arms free, then was dragged down when he got the footy. Another oh, no, ball up. Not gonna go and the players realise now that the next goal, if Melbourne yep, get it, throws this game wide open. Fremantle have missed some chances in the last few minutes. Ibbotson got very high, thumped it down. Palmer, who's been terrific, taken down by Bell. Oh, held to him. You've got your hand on it. Giving you the chance to get it out. At the moment, Melbourne have got a free play across half back. The Dockers haven't got a play across half back. They've actually got another player, an extra player at this stoppage. Arms around him. Free kick to no, Melbourne, free is kick. it? Mark Jamar, hands around him. So Down that the negates the extra Sean, player. Two metres, Sean. But that's dicing with death, particularly the way Fremantle have used the ball in the midfield. McLean, Maloney, lays it off. Now Bell, up the ground. Warnock, Bell, Davy, 70 metres out from goal. Bell's first kick should have gone inside their attacking 50. Takes the man on, steps around O'Brien, Robertson headed back for the square. Davy runs to the 50, sells a dummy, bit of magic. This will bring the roof down and it's not the dome. And what was he thinking, Tim? Whatever it was, it was very clever. Just, this is, he's just going to run himself into trouble here. He sold the dummy. Now he's on 50. He knows he's within scoring range and he finished it off beautifully. And the celebration. And players came from all parts of the ground to celebrate with him too. A bizarre build-up. Wonderful goal, Ricky. Well, Fremantle know that the momentum is swinging against them. They just made four changes at that goal. They brought some big guns on. Sanderland, Pavlich and McFarlane all back on. Hardbutt's in the middle, McManus is in there, Pavlich is in there too. Well, they need to make a statement here. McLean is becoming influential. He had a lot of the footy in the first half, but nothing was happening. But it is now, McDonald getting his hands on it. Wheatley, Maloney. One bounce. Now, he kicked the ball very badly in the first half. He needs to kick this well. He's kicked it to the top of the goal square. Robertson, again, too close to goal, maybe. It was a sort of nothing kick, wasn't it? It was not one thing or the other. But they're getting the spread, aren't they? They're actually winning the stoppages now and then getting that spread out on the wings and they've been able to find some space. To throw against the Dockers. Just give it to him. Go on. Daniel Bell. this turn quickly. Daniel Bell towards the middle and White has to wait. Drop the mark. Fremantle close in. Garland has it now. Garland the short one. And this has been a real plus for Melbourne. He's been out of form for a long time, this man. But Miller, the boy from Brisbane, has been terrific. Eight marks now. There's the throw. I was watching the Dockers play, then they died. Just trailed Miller. Nobody wanted to pick him up. Not enough urgency in their play. They actually need to just work their way back into this game, Fremantle. The momentum is clearly with Melbourne. There's only one way to do it, and that is to get into the trenches. Distance won't be a problem. He's a long kick. Is he an accurate kick? He's off to the right. Well, it fell about a metre short as it turned out, but helped on its way. Another behind. Margin back to 20 points. Miller's booted two this afternoon. They did lead by as much as 51, the Dockers. They've slowed Freo at the kick-ins as well. It's so symptomatic of how a side's going in modern-day football, and if they struggle to kick the ball in, it's a pressure that's being applied from elsewhere. And now a bit of indecision. Ibbots in the target. In the early stages of what looks to be a really big career coming up for Ibbotson. 
And that's a dangerous kick. The Robbo now, he's 55 out, leans back, kicks it long and misses. And Davey is signalling to him that the ball should have gone to the top of the square to him. It snuck in behind the Freo defence. Melbourne has kicked five goals seven to six behind in this turn. That's a terrific mark by Solomon. He's been good for most of the day, Dean Solomon. Across the ground he comes, pinpoint accuracy to his former Bomber teammate, Mark Johnson. He lays it off to Johnson, his namesake, kicks towards the 50. Bell got a fist on it, Melbourne in number at the back of the pack. The extra number helps out too, over the top, McLean. Got it to Wheatley, to Bell, too long, inadvertently struck his foot. Rolled about 10 metres, Johnson to Solomon. Solomon just outside the 50, and Pavlich. Okay. This is a very important kick. Matthew Pavlich will kick from about 35 metres out, slight angle. Some hard work from Solomon on the outer side, making it happen. Pavlich back on the ground recently. He's kicked a couple today, another poster. Keeps racking up those posters, as we said earlier, the poster boy for posters. Most of the competition. What's he done here? He's kicked a goal. Good one for Frio, that. They really needed a goal then, Fremantle. And uh, it was good play here by McManus. There's the tackle. They just over-possessed the ball again, Melbourne, on the way out. They had the right option. And Solomon just stepped up to the mark, got the handball, and hit the right target. And then the skipper just finished it off for them. It's been a great challenge for Fremantle, though, to lose the momentum like this and then have to win it back. Three goals, three for the captain today. He kicked three behind before his first, so he's got 20 for the season. Just two goals for the Dockers in the last 43 minutes. But that was a handy one. It gives them a bit of breathing space. And they might get another. Pavlich was terrific as Solomon got it to him again. And then he loads it up. It's half a chance. Oh, it's gone all the way. It's a goal. That, that was a massive kick, but that worked by Solomon again in at the stoppage. He won the ball and then fed the handball to Pavlich, as we'll see here in the replay. It's just a small handball. That's just power then from Pavlich to be able to push off McDonald like he did. He's in the square when he actually kicked that ball. It sails through by just the metre to out, just past the outstretched arm. And that's how you win back the momentum. You win the ball in at the centre bounce and then you finish off like Fremantle have, and it's their star player that's been able to kick the last two goals. 13-16 to 8-15, and Pavlich putting his stamp on this game, and again putting his stamp on Cameron Bruce. It's a lot of body moving around in there, and Pavlich has won the free kick. Back-to-back -back goals with successive kicks, unlike Adelaide last week, he did it the hard way. Alongside the centre circles, goes looking for Farmer. Good grab by Garland, who flirted with the idea of going on. Stops. On the defensive 50, it's White. Clock running down. Late goal to Melbourne would be what the doctor would order. If Fremantle get it, you would think that Melbourne would go in deflated. And Green just chips it around the boundary to Morton. Are they building for one final thrust? We're about to find out. Morton. Goes for distance to half forward. In from the side. Big leap down there by Carroll of all people. Trying to get through O'Brien. Met solidly by Miller. Great tackle, great. And we've got a bounce. No Clock stops at 52. It's great play from the skipper, isn't it, Pavlich, to go and kick Ten. those two goals at this Blood critical goal. stage of the third quarter. O'Brien's coming off under the blood rule. Just watch that clock. Strange things happen in these circumstances. In fact, it's Cameron Bruce who's coming off. The clock hasn't moved, has it, Bruce? No. Got my on it, Dan. I just wonder, I just wonder with Pavlich, too, whether or not, uh, similar to James Hurd at Essen, where he would just go and put himself on the ball. I don't know whether that move's actually made by the coaching staff or he just senses the urgency in the game. But once they kicked a few goals, well, when he just pushed himself up onto the ball, now he's pushed himself behind the ball, playing three-man inside. White and Sandilands. Sandilands clears it. 
Wide of the congestion. That's a throw against Green, is it? An open hand, perhaps. Yo, Dean Solomon's kick! Dean Solomon in the last few minutes has been outstanding. One of their best recruits. He was very much chucked into the deal. Almost the teaser stallion for Chris Tarrant. Driven by Pavlich towards the outer side wing. And it's pushed across the line by Monday. Clock stops at 25. We go on about the clock, but gee, it's been in the news. I would suggest, Bruce, required viewing for every timekeeper, Bill and Ted's bogus journey, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> oh, you better write to them, Dennis. I will. Palmer draws a man now to Shammer. Pavlich, could he kick a third goal late in this quarter? Not quite. So four goals, four to Pavlich. His last five minutes has been enormous. It's what you'd expect from the champ, isn't it? Started in the defensive 50, then just worked his way through or forward with the ball. So Melbourne have got it back from 50 to 32. You just don't feel like they've done enough. They did a whole lot of work and then Pav stepped up. Well, Harvey, look, the look on his face probably said it all. He wouldn't have been happy with the quarter of football, but I think he would have been happy and pleased with the way they actually won the momentum back before three-quarter time. So we've still got a contest. Melbourne need a fast start. They trail by 32 at three-quarter time. This is Sunday Football. Final turn, that kick by Pavlich, 75, 80 metres, on the fly. It crossed the goal line on the full. Sandilands knocks it down. Melbourne needs some early scores. Jamar went to ground. And that ball's not coming out. Thanks, guys. Well, you look to confusion, too, for Melbourne when Pavlich goes into the centre bounces like that because they've got to try and find their man after that. They're not sure if he's going to float forward again and play as a forward or he's going to stay on the ball. Almost got it that time. Maloney off the ground while being held. That awards half forward. Wanamiri thrown by O'Brien, who tracks it back inside his defensive 50. Looks across the ground, untidy kick. Sandlins did pretty well. Had it got by, it might have been a Melbourne ball. He goes again. Trying to get through is Thornton, tied up by Jamar. Umpire lets them play for a while. And now a bounce. 60 metres out from Melbourne's attacking goal, just inside the centre square. Jamar and Sandilands. Sandilands, good use of the body. Falls to Bruce, though. Around the corner, Wanamiri lets it run on inadvertently. He was going to get the bounce, but couldn't. And the ball now taken across the line after a fumble from Robbo. It was not happy. And once again, Fremantle are playing with an extra player actually on the ball. Melbourne have elected to leave a spare player across half-back. Jamar and Sandlin. Sandlin wins the tap. Pavlich. <laughs> Gee. That was hot. Wow. That's not a disposal here. So incorrect Thank disposal, you. the decision. Thank you. And Cameron Bruce with a chance to do something that Matthew Pavlich did very successfully in that third quarter, and that's to kick an important goal. So they're up in a good position. Got it right. Well, every one meter, one meter. shot for goal important for Melbourne in this last quarter. An early goal here, and they're still in this match. He's hooked it badly. It's a poor kick. Sandilands almost boundary throw in. Hasn't been the dominant player today, Sandlins. They've worked him over pretty well, Melbourne. Jay mar has been jumping into him, and then they've swapped him and brought wide on. He's run him around the ground. So Miller actually went against him, and then Maloney, good-looking kick. Goal. That's the one they needed. Well, once again, we see the Melbourne players actually roving to the ruck work here of Sandlin's just watch this he gets his hand almost to the ball and that's just too much freedom I mean you've got to lock down on players in the forward line like that Maloney just had so much room there to operate in well the coach gave him a spray at quarter time about his use of the ball no debating that last one I think if we could judge what Dean Bailey was saying, he wasted three kicks. Well, he just got six Melbourne points. Kick. Melbourne get a kick. 
26 points the difference. Brock McLean, early going, final term, goes to half for Bates got better the longer it's gone. He's provided a target. Davey comes hard. One of Murray is lurking behind the pack, and Robertson is going to the square. Plenty of activity. Robbo will fly. Off hands. One of Murray. Get a boot to it, son. How many times have we said this afternoon that they've kicked the ball too deep when they've gone into their forward line? Here's the free kick. Here's a free yes. kick uh, going into early there off the centre square. That's where the free kick occurred. Robbo just got there. Actually didn't even influence the contest. Made a contest and then they get the crumb and they can kick a goal. But the difference with that kick was that it was at the top of the square. It was about 10 metres at the top of the square. Austin Watamiri, the 19-year-old, who's been a big hit in a handful of games for the Melbourne. Great reaction. <laughs> You've got to love that, don't you? Sure do. That is just unbridled yeah. joy. Yep. A lot of passion for footy, eh? 20-point margin, so Melbourne doing just what they needed to do. They've cancelled the Pavlich goals out, and they're back in it, and Dennis, you were spot on about Bate. He has got a lot better as it's gone on. Oh. McLean was terrific to Bruce. Morton away. Good kick. Well, this is the biggest kick of the match about to happen right now. How critical have the clearances become in this game since about midway through the third quarter? And Bate and McLean since half-time. I know McLean had a lot of it early. He's had less. I think he had 13 in the first half. He's had 10 in this half, but he's actually had an influence in this half. Just in this quarter, 6-0 the clearances. Most Melbourne important Twain. kick of the match, Tim, this. He's had a terrific day, Miller. A big day. I reckon it might be time for Fremantle. That free that player that they've actually been using at the stoppages is having no impact on this game whatsoever. If Melbourne are going to put a player behind the ball across half back as that free player, it's probably time for them to shift a player free behind the ball as well, just to slow this game down. They've got to win the momentum back again. He's been good, Miller, hasn't he? He's been terrific. Fourteen points the margin. The closest they've been since the 21-minute mark of the opening. What about those disposals in this term? Fremantle can't find the footy. Away we go. The rucks push off each other. Sandilands worth a kick. That awards half forward. Guess who? Solomon. That's holding it. Well, he worked hard to get there. No one really came to help. Wheatley's got it at centre half back. Proud can send it now. Long to the outer side. Once more pushing up the ground. Bate. He keeps going. So does this youngster. Man running past inside as well. Davey could have given it over the top. Decides to kick it towards the middle. Wrong decision. And getting back, Palmer takes the mark. He flirted with his skills then, Davey. He should have done the percentage thing. Maloney had run to space. It yep. was just a simple handball over the top. They would have retained possession. And it was so slow developing. All the forwards knew what was happening. Maloney was going to get it, and they were headed back towards the square. But give credit to Palmer. Worked back hard. Around the outer side, two veterans combined. Bell to Johnson. Inside the forward 50. And a terrific grab taken by Palmer. You take your kick, Jeff? Now... This flies in the face of what we saw at the end of the tie. I hate to sort of go on about this, but the umpire has whistled time on. Then he asked the player, can you take your kick? So time is running now. The advantage the umpire has here is he can call him to play on after 30. And Farmer is taking plenty of the 30 lining up. But then again, he needs to because this in this game represents a very important kick. Gets under it, it's out to the right, big pack, and Melbourne do the right thing. White just pushes it across the line. Bruce, what price the draw? Shortening by the second, Dennis, not the minute. <laughs> I'll never ask you again. You're starting to tire of the question. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button, so ask me again later. 
Gee, they've been inaccurate since that one was rushed, but they've kicked two goals eight since half time, the Dockers. Remember last Friday night they had that big lead at three quarter time? Yeah. Bates become an important player in this last quarter, too. Free Hand kick to back. Miller. Hand in the back against Michael Johnson. Ooh. At the moment, they've got two winners across half forward, Miller and Bates. Bruce the target and takes the mark. He's a workaholic, Bruce, isn't he? he? Just gets so much of the ball. Good kick on to White, who runs on now from 60. A high ball. Robbo will be the flyer. Didn't need to fly. Fell into his arms. Well, it was really smart play there by White. A, to make the running and find the space. And then it was Sandlin who actually, his direct opponent, pushed back into the hole there, but he kicked the ball over his head and made him redundant. Well, Robbo's kicked one today. He's had a couple of assists. He's got his second. Unbelievably, Melbourne close. Well, I don't know about you two, but I'll be disappointed if we don't get a draw on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> We've come to expect it, haven't we? Gee, we're going to get a close one, I think. I think Just so. Not Sunday afternoon without a draw. They're full of running and now, Melbourne. The, the difference from last Friday night when... Just good body work there by Jared yeah, Rivers. Just, it was terrific, he just wasn't shifted it? the pack, didn't he? Didn't use his arms, didn't use his hands. It was just a bit of a nudge. And Robbo, who reads those so well in the flight. Look at that inside, 56 to 2 in this last quarter. Into the smile, Chris Connolly against his old club. I tell you who is getting nervous, the timekeepers. But done by White, Solomon, Sandilands. Here come Frio, Sandilands, ill-directed. Garland needed to mark, created a problem. Farmer kicks a goal. Hey, Luke, Luke, Luke. But that's just a kid making an error. He had to take the mark. He actually had to put his hands up in the air. And somebody had to call him into that play. They had to give him the confidence to go for that ball. But once again, it was Solomon at the centre bounce here. Won the ball from the tap, and then they just pushed it forward. That ball had to be marked there by Garland. This is the reaction from Jeff Farmer. I, I think actually Wanamiri's got him covered. <laughs> I don't know about you, Dennis, or Bruce, but I, I still prefer one of the mirrors. Yeah. And a couple to Farmer today, so both at that end of the ground. So can Melbourne respond? They need the next one. I mean, that's obvious, but the Dockers get an important one back. Bate got it from Maloney, and Bate inside the 50. Oh, oh. Takes out beauty. That was a beautiful kick then by Bate. That was perfectly positioned for Robbo. Here they are winning a ball again from the scrimmage. It was Maloney's quick little handball. This bloke's been better the longer the game's gone. Well, so is Robbo. I mean, Bate to Robbo in the first half would have been a disaster. Can he kick a third? A second within a couple of minutes. It's coming back. He's got it. They're not going to go away. They've Actually, for the first time this afternoon, it's a really good game of football. A good really good game Maloney. of football. Six goals out of Miller and Robertson now. But they're two big forwards, Melbourne. Well, for the first time since half-time, they've actually had some flow in their play. They've been getting it there with regularity, and they've been getting it there quickly, so they've found some space to operate in the forwards. He has a remarkable mark when he comes out full tilt. He reminds me of Jason Dunstall. I think he's the best mm. I've seen just coming flat chat and taking it in one grab. Sandilands has got other ideas though. Thumps it down towards Hartford. Is that in the back? I think so. McManus will get the three. Now Fremantle need to settle here. Make something of this. McManus feeling the effects of being driven into the MCG turf. Kicks for distance. Long ball. Why not? Pavlich is down there. Opted out of the contest. Spills. Pavlich put the body in. Trying to wrestle it away from Bell. 
And he did successfully, but it doesn't come out. Have a ball up. Here's McManus being tied up in the tackle. That's the dangerous one where the player has no arm free to actually cushion the fall. So the Dockers in a challenging position with Sanderlands. White did well just to stop him getting a boot to the ball. And Tim, we're thinking about I Melbourne maybe having a win. Can you think of the fallout of Fremantle lose this match with the lead they had at one and five coming in? There's a great scorn there for McManus too after having his head driven into the ground. So the stakes are high here. Massive for the Dockers. Bruce to McLean. And then McLean wide, running away from Miller. I think he's pretty happy to see it over the line. So, season on the line for the Dockers here, no question about that. I mean, Paul Hazel, we spoke to you oh. and Dennis at halftime. Whack, Chief oh. Barton, that is, uh, that's yeah. not good. The advantage given to Ibbotson, he didn't get much in the end. He kicked a high left footer and Pavlich in the front spot. It was Tarrant at the back who made the first leap. And Pavlich, who's been the star for the Dockers as this guy has gone on. And that was really great play then by Tarrant because you'd expect that Warnock would have been able to come into that contest and affect the spoil, but he was held by Tarrant. He hasn't had a disposal since half-time, Tarrant, but that was a good shield. Warnock's been good on him. This for a fifth goal. He kicked five last week in a losing effort against Geelong. He's got five, and it's been a big performance by the captain, maybe a match-winning performance. He's a really strong body player, isn't he, Matthew Pavlich? The way he just lent on Carroll as the ball came in there, he got rid of him so easily. And he's the player they've gone to this afternoon when they've got themselves in a little bit of trouble and they've tried to shift the momentum. Here's a kick in here from Ibbotson. Goes to the top of the square. They've been prepared to do that. And he just leaned on Carroll. He just got rid of him so easily, just by two hands on his shoulder, pushed him out of the way. And then Carroll was hoping that Warnock came over the top. But it was Tarrant that blocked his path to the ball too. The interchanges to date. Melbourne have made more than the Dockers, as you can see. And going over the weekend, that could just about lead the way. No prior. Collingwood right down can, yesterday no on their interchanges. Matthew Pavlich is best against Melbourne. Six, round four last season. He's five right now in a virtuoso performance with a poster. Wide of the pack taken by Warnock. Slips it across to Davey. Melbourne with the lights on attacking bait to both sides of the ground. He's worked hard. I suppose it's almost to be expected. He makes that sort of fumble. He's a tired man back in the team today. Johnson comes away. Goes down towards half forward. Solomon was there. Over the top was Rivers. Mark Johnson. He's at the base of all of that. With assistance oh, coming out. from Tarrant for the, the ball Dockers. Come out. Melbourne player grab hold of it. Here's the explanation. Thanks, there are the Stephane. lights. 93 plays 108. Time enough. But the Demons at the present time down the wrong end and Sandland sends it deeper into attack. McManus almost. Bell in trouble. Strong tackle by Farmer. Bell wants the boundary. Hasn't gone out of bounds, Jeff. Let him up. Don't go high, Jeff. No, Jeff. What's the call? Up we go. Up we go. Don't go high. Don't go high. It's going to be a bounce. It wasn't out of bounds. What about that punch in from Sandland's to the free player, McManus, who was running onto it. And again, Tim, a brilliant bit of work by Sandilands. Johnson unable to. Gets a second crack. McManus over the ball with a couple of demons, including Bell, and again a ball up. Just watch this smash here from Sandilands. Just bang. Cleared the stoppage. McManus was running onto it. Another chance here. Now, j to try and keep him out of it. He does. Pavlich working hard. They bring him down the demons. Maloney there, gang tackle, ball up. He just wears blokes down, doesn't he, Sandlins? All day they're jumping, they're jumping. They get to the last quarter, they're tired. They just can't jump anymore. He doesn't have to. He just stands there and just swats the ball. Gets another crack here. Over the top to Pavlich. Oh, clever. Well done to Farmer. And then Farmer hooks back to the goal square. And a behind. What an advantage it is to know that your Ruckman is going to win probably 75% of the tests late in a game like this. I mean, he's giving his players a ground level and armchair right again. Margin 16 points. 
Wheatley, normally a long kick. This is no exception. Right up to the wing, loose at the back, a chance for Bate. Pursued by Johnson. Bate went to ground. He was a bit lucky. He was on the way down. Johnson clattered into him. Bate gets the free, but gee, we've liked his game. Well, they've shifted Johnson on him. That's how worried they are about his form in the last quarter. Robbo takes off towards the boundary. That will be ignored. Kick comes in towards the middle. Oh, almost. Crowley did brilliantly, then couldn't hang on. And we've got a bounce about 40 metres out from Melbourne's attacking goal. That's frustration there from Jones. He's had four touches this afternoon. Crowley's done a magnificent job on him. Oh, dear. So, abuse. Crowley to the outer side, leaping very high was Bartram, got it on the ground, McLean couldn't keep it in, and you just got to bite your lip. It's Jones, just such a soft free kick to give away, he had 24 disposals against Brisbane last week and kicked four goals, so Crowley's done a mighty job on him. Melbourne keeping on, coming on though, McLean to set a half forward. Green, not quite. Robbo, good kick again. He's got another one, I think. He's kicked three in the last. Four for the day. There's still a chance. Well, he's a soloist. He doesn't need Kate Sobrano. He's going OK on his own at the moment. This was great play by Green, though. Oh, actually, I don't know, though, he, he handballed that. It looked like he might have just flicked it over there to, to Robbo. But that is non-preferred side. His left foot, he was just able to slide around the corner. And he's happy with his effort. He was injured earlier today, too. Remember when we thought oh, he was going to come back? he does it all back? the time, Bruce. Just foxing. So the margin is back to 10 points. The question might be, how did Green get rid of the footy? <laughs> A little sleight of hand, hard to see for the umpire in there. And Robertson, a wonderful finish. Robertson at one end, Pavlich at the other. A lot to like in the second half of this one. Sandlin stumps it down. Sliding in down there was Maloney, goes after it again. Got it out to Bruce. Melbourne attack. Once more it's bait. Awkward bounce though. Johnson the first back. In trouble. Miss Bell. Sandlin's has it. At close quarters. Gave it to support. Well, eventually Thornton goes back to the man who gave it to him. That's Drum. They're working double time. Gilmore. Sandlin's low down. Hand pass of a tired man. Miller breaks a tackle. Wadamiri is on. Wadamiri's got it. And how about this? Melbourne. Wadamiri. Looked across the ground and saw Morton, no percentage in that, take a shot. That was sensational play by Melbourne, in particular Miller, just to stay involved in that contest. Fremantle were desperate to get the ball away from there, but Melbourne just kept coming at them, and eventually they coughed it up. Wanamiri, 40 metres out, has kicked a goal! Less than a goal in the front. He's kicked three this afternoon. He's in his keep. He's been terrific. I love his celebration as well. This Shammer has just come off the ground. They'll rest him up. They'll bring him back on again. They need some fresh legs out there. But this is the ball they just couldn't clear here. And Melbourne kept coming. This bloke's been terrific. He and Bate. And then Robertson, who's joined in the party in this last quarter, has given them a lot of life in their fourth half. Look at that. <laughs> the boy from Melbourne Island. So for the second week in a row, he kicks three goals in a match, but he's done it under the pressure of having a chance of winning. Within four points, a remarkable match here at the G. The Dockers led by 51. Melbourne has never come back from such a margin to win a game, ever. Ever? No. Nope. And here they are within four points. And just said earlier, the fallout if the Dockers lose this match today will be heard for a long time out west and Melbourne right now are probably favourite they need to get their nose in front and they might in a minute Miller's been terrific and so is McLean who got it to him Miller loads up where's Robbo? Morton he's kicked another one what a Mary. he's got four this is a celebration they're in front Good as this. Oh, look at 
a smile. Well, you're just going to love it. As long as you're not a Fremantle supporter, you're just going to love what you're seeing at the MCG this afternoon. Once they get the ball in the open, oh, yeah. this bloke has been outstanding. They haven't been able to chop him off. He's provided the target. Here's the one-on-one -on -one contest, and what a mirror. He just read it so beautifully. And his celebrations are as good as you will see in this game. And they've had nothing to cheer about these fans all year. And they are delirious at the moment. Dean needs to work on his happiness <laughs> at the minute, but he knows there's still seven and a half minutes to go. He's smiling inwardly. He's very happy. That pancreas is vibrating. Then goes White on Thornton. Bait again. What a game he's played. Slaps it out to McLean. McLean goes to half forward, stretching Maloney. Maloney is 55 metres out. Kicks back in the square. Davy. Oh, gee whiz. Fremantle have got the staggers. Davy will line up from about two metres out. Take your line. Well, what about this? Melbourne in the first half were like one of those nervous African dictators. They always took a different route home. Now they're going long to the square and they're kicking goals. Disposals in this last quarter, 53 to Melbourne, just 24 to Fremantle. They can't get their hands on the ball. They're not winning the clearances. And then once Melbourne get it out in the open, they just look so much more, uh, so much faster than Fremantle. Pavlich is going back into the centre bounce. Solomon's in there. They're hard nuts. And Bell, one of their better ball winners. Well, Davies kicked three. One of Mary's kicked four. Robbo's had three in this last quarter for four. They're winning the stoppages. They've got a little cushion here late in this match. Dockers have got to kick at least two. And remember, the Dockers gave up their biggest lead ever last week at three-quarter time to lose, and they had a bigger one today. And Bruce, they've got a problem even if they win from here. Melbourne now have two extra players behind the ball. So the clock could become important. White's kick out wide. Where's the pace here? It's with O'Brien to Bell. Well, the transformation is just remarkable. It's hard to believe, actually. What about that, Tim? Two men behind the ball. Why now? They're dominating in midfield. Stay with what's got you here. I exactly. But, I mean, Fremantle haven't put any players behind the ball, so they've got two extras at this stoppage. Mm. McLean having a rest, he's been so important, McLean, what's he had? 27 disposals today, 13 in the first half, 14, McDonald hacks it forward, and the man of the moment, this 19-year-old Wanamiri on to green, it was nearly off. He's on the wrong side, but you know, he's good enough to kick this. He has a natural fade from left to right, so this will suit his kicking. This is icing on the cake if he kicks this. This gets them home, you reckon. This almost puts the Dockers away. He kicked the first goal for the Demons today. They were hapless for an hour, the Demons. And right now, you reckon he could just about close this off. Not bad. Very good. It's touched. Wow. Well, that'll be interesting to see again. Ball comes out intended for Sandilands. He was held, and the big guy, the focal point, has to find something now. Lift his flagging teammates. Gilmore goes out wide, Shanna. Forward and left half back. Again the short one, this time to the wing. Ibbotson who started so well. Who would have thought it? Melbourne by nine. They trailed by 50 at half time. Long down towards half forward. Rivers came hard. He's at free play. So out of bounds. Dennis, he's that free play that got behind the ball. So he read that beautifully. He started in the defensive 50. Saw the kick going out wide. This is the one that. Gee, oh. that looked over the line. Don't forget you got to factor in the fat bit, apparently. But even so, Gilmore controversy. And they're all coming from the same script. Dodgy goal. Time problems. Farmer snaps and kicks it behind. This is probably three or four weeks of footy the AFL would love to forget.
despite some great games. 118, 110. Oh, McDonald went looking for Warnock who fell over. Farmer tracks back, dutifully gets it away. Solomon has been terrific. Inside the forward 50, Bell was up in front, fell behind McManus. Hard one for Drum. Mundy is through. Mundy has missed. Makes the point he was pushed in the back. May have a case. What price a draw, Dennis? Shortening, oh. shortening by the minute, Tim. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know my line. <laughs> Lister, Tim knows who I am this week. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Morton. Melbourne through Green. Wanamiri. Oh, that's an outstanding in this final quarter. This will be his 15th touch. Good kick in the end. To Maloney's, they've all lifted, haven't they? Maloney's yep. been one that's lifted. They all uh, needed to, though. Well, Dean Bailey signalled him out. Well, along with Nathan Carroll at quarter time, remember that look he gave Maloney? He went one, two, three, bad kicks. Here's Bruce. It's got to be one-on-one -on -one footy now from Fremantle. They've got to just shut them down Jeez. and try and win the ball back. There's plenty of time. We talked 30 minutes about go about decision-making, Tim, for the Melbourne under pressure. This, this is, is gonna pressure now. Yeah, this, this is, is really going to test them. But Fremantle have to get right up in their faces and just stop these kicks from sticking. That's too much space to bait. Bruce to bait. Talked a lot about Bates' revival after halftime. First match for the year. He's done a terrific job. He's got a Lucy. He's got McLean on his own. He's going to load it up, though. And go inside the 50. Robbo, one of the targets. Under pressure, Johnson went to ground. Hasn't got it out yet. It'll be a ball up. Dean Bailey on the edge of something special. He's worried about the clock and why not? Peter Bell brilliantly done. Sandilands, that was ambitious. McDonald stepped around Mundy. Here's a chance now for Bruce. Under pressure. Snaps. Big leap Robbo. Fingertips to it across the line. Makes no difference to Fremantle's plight, really. They're down by eight points in midfield. Palmer. The run of Bell drives it towards the outer side wing. Pavlich has got it. No time to rest now. Back to Bell. The old heads combining. Bell around the outer side. Brilliant kick. Tarrant. I think his first possession of the second half. Crowley's pushed deep. He's just got to move it on from here. He's 60 metres out, Chris Tarrant. Clock is down to two minutes. That's not the spot for it. The same problem we talked about before. Now Davey ambles away. Settles, comes back to the middle, Frawley. Great show of confidence by Davey. Bruce, they've got the extra man out there, McLean. Warnock around the outer side wing. And it goes long, a percentage kick towards the boundary line. What a Mary and Thornton. Do you expect some more desperation from Fremantle in this desperate stage of the game though, wouldn't you? They look tired though. Melbourne have run them ragged in the second part of this half. So that attendance almost up to 20,000. It was a talking point all week. And there's a red and blue wave of excitement here at the moment. Crowley threw it out in the end. Palmer very good early to drum. Last roll of the dice, you reckon. McManus has kicked a beauty. And who better to give it to? Can he kick number six? He looked like being the match winner earlier. I don't think it's going to be a goal, but it puts them... No, within seven points, which is not going to help them right now. That might have been it. How big's this kick in? He had to take the kick quickly, but he didn't actually line himself up squarely no. with the goal. Wheatley drives. It's a great kick. Bruce Marks. And now 50. And clock stops. Seven points the difference. Crowley gives up 50. And Bruce now in the ideal spot to waste a little time. McDonald is peeling off. Bell not watching him, walking with his head down. Oh, well, that's no good. That is terrible. By a great player in Peter Bell. Probably thinking about a move back to Geraldton. 
Here's McDonald. Around the boundary. Bruce. Bell. Trying to corral him. Taken high was Green. Bell steals it. Back comes Green. Clever little hand pass. Miller has been terrific. Throws it out of bounds. Throw in. And the clock, Bruce, is down to 38 seconds. And Melbourne, you would think, have won their first of the season. Well, this has been remarkable. Robbo to Bruce. To Dodd. Palmer back to McDonald. Their captain for the day. Back to McLean. Dodd to Palmer. Hard running. Still hard running. Over the top. They're seven points behind, though. Gilmore's kick. Tarrant. Big mark. Not quite. Wait for the siren. Bad handball. Farmer hacks it. Well, there's a goal the difference. With time about to win it for the Ds. It's the second biggest comeback ever since half time by any team and they've done it. An extraordinary day at the G. This has been a Fox Sports presentation.